Are you feeling stuck in life, afraid to make changes despite your desire for something more? It happens to all of us sometimes at different points in our lives. It is perfectly normal to feel stuck sometimes. Well, and stick around because in this episode of the Mental Health Toolbox, we are talking with Marilyn Brown, a holistic therapist who shares her journey in embracing change to get unstuck and gain clarity around her goals. So let's go. Yes. Um, my journey is, I think what I'd like to share with my journey, one of the things that I, um, a story that I share that, that I share in the interest of giving people hope and, and letting people know that there's something on the, on the other side of often the biggest challenges of your life. Um, and so my, my journey with MS has been a big challenge, but actually prior to that, um, I was unhoused for it wasn't that long in, in the grand scheme of life. I think it was about a season. It's about three months. Um, and in that experience, really letting go of everything that I had, of so many of my possessions and really having to just kind of be broken down to having nothing. And, and you know, I grew up, we didn't have a lot of money, but we always had a roof over our head. Mm. And so that wasn't something that I had ever really experienced. And yet it was the most liberating experience of my life. Marilyn Julia Brown is a therapist, artist, and intuitive healer. She lives and works as a licensed psychotherapist, clinical supervisor, registered yoga teacher, storyteller, podcaster, and certified energy healer in Southern California. She currently holds her professional license as a marriage and family therapist and has over 15 years of experience working in various roles in diverse mental health settings and currently works in her private practice, a mindful way counseling to provide liberated based psychotherapy. Marilyn recently launched Liberated Well LLC where she provides accessible soul, mind, body-centered digital wellness resources to help folks heal from trauma and return home to themselves. On her podcast, Black Messy Mindful Marilyn uses her humor, empathy, and professional expertise to provide wisdom and wellness for the culture. You can learn more about her work by visiting one of her two websites, liberatedwell.com or a mindful way counseling.com. So let's jump in. Hello, Marilyn, and thank you so much for making time to be on the Mental Health Toolbox podcast today. I really appreciate you and uh, excited to hear all your words of wisdom. Uh, uh, you I know so you, you're just waiting to, <laughs> waiting to unload because you have a wealth of experience. So yes, thank you again. Yes. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Yes. So I know a bit of your background, obviously. You're um, more than a triple threat. <laughs> I like that. Therapist, like that. Uh, <laughs> yoga teacher, online entrepreneur, um, mm -hmm. energy healer. So, yeah. so much to dive into. So why don't you go ahead and share a little bit about your background and what you're about? Sure. Um, so I am a licensed marriage and family therapist. Mm -hmm. I've been practicing in California um, for over 10 years, just about. I've had my license. Um, I actually, had to, it has been 10 years, actually, this year. Um, hey, congratulations. And prior to that, thank you so much. And prior to that, I've worked in every, um, every setting of mental health. So I worked in um, behavioral health hospitals outside of Chicago. I worked mm -hmm. in county mental health. I worked in eating disorders programs, um, university connected eating disorder programs. So I've had almost 20 years of experience in the mental health field and really working hands on with people um, on a one on one basis. And I absolutely love what I do. I always tell people I feel like I came to this work pretty naturally that I'm somebody that just likes to understand people and wants to just kind of get to know people. And, and I've always been able to empathize with people in different situations and experiences. And so I think it's just been something that it, I was really naturally drawn to this work. And I kind of moved towards it because it was like the path of least resistance. And like, for me, that was really important. You know, I didn't want to do something where I was just going to be exhausted and forcing myself. I definitely did have that challenge when I went to graduate school, I was working full time. And so I would go to graduate school after work and and did that process, but it didn't, it still felt natural to me. And it felt like something that I was really called to. 
Um, and just professionally in the last maybe year or so, I've been incorporating um, yoga into my work as well. And so yoga was something that I personally came to after being diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in mm. 2015. Um, I had always wanted to do yoga. I was one of those people like Instagram. I followed probably 200 different Instagram yoga accounts when uh -huh. I first started on Instagram and I never did yoga. I would just look and, oh, that looks so great. I would love to do that. But I, it didn't feel like something that was really available to me. When I got that diagnosis, it was like, okay, I need to invest in myself and in my body specifically and in keeping my body strong and, and healthy. And yoga was something that just felt like the right choice for me. And so I made a decision to spend money that at the time I didn't really feel like I had to actually start practicing. And it was something that really just, it, it brought so much to my life. And probably within the first six months of practicing, I knew that I wanted to get registered as a yoga teacher, do the training and bring this to my clients as well. Cause I felt like it was that missing piece that I don't really get to explore with people in talk therapy. Um, oh, I see. And that's what the RYT stands for. Yes. So registered it's registered yoga teacher. Exactly. I don't know what the 200 is, but <laughs> yes, 200 hour registered yoga teacher. So I'm currently studying for my 300 hour, but taking some time with that. And I'm, I'm really enjoying just teaching at this, this level. Um, and then in addition to that, like you mentioned, I do energy work as well. And so I'm currently in a sound healer certification program. Um, and I've been doing Reiki and doing energy healing in that respect for probably about seven or eight years now. That's something that I was kind of just also naturally drawn to. Um, my mom is a healer, just naturally like lays hands on people when, when people are struggling. It's just something that's kind of been a part of my family and my ancestral line lineage. And so it was really important to me to be able to bring that into my work as well. And so I'm just kind of enjoying figuring out how to fit all of those things together and, and being an online entrepreneur now is kind of that piece to be able to bring all of these different offerings to more people. Because that's, I think as a therapist, that's the hard part of that work we do. It's like, it's one-on-one, -on -one. maybe we're doing groups, but we want to be able to reach more people. So I'm excited to be able to do that in the next yes, year. Absolutely. Which is why I started this podcast is for the yes. same, out of the same frustration that, you know, the work we do is, is important, but it, it's still just trading time for money and you can only help one person at a time, you know, and exactly. as opposed to, you know, creating something that can help educate the masses, you know, at a yes. larger scale. And not that it replaces therapy, but it's a nice augment to mental health, right? For sure. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And you have a podcast too, right? I do. I do. I have a podcast called Black Messy Mindful. And so it's about bringing wisdom and wellness for the culture. Um, and so recognizing that like mindfulness and mental health and, and healing and wellness are, are available to all of us and are things that we all can have a language for and can have a connection to and already do have a connection to. And so being able to provide that. And so I love podcasting, but I really struggled with finding a way to do it and still have ease. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I'm kind of like, okay, I'm actually learning from a lot of podcasters now about how how to, you know, book guests and how to kind of flow, have a flow to that process so that it doesn't feel like so much labor. Cause I, I love the podcast mm -hmm. and I really enjoyed it, but I pretty much have been doing the whole thing on my own. And it's a lot of, it's a lot of work. This is. <laughs> so. it's more, more, more work than I think people uh, understand on the outside. Definitely, definitely. And so I'm trying to find kind of systems and ways to to do that so I can still bring the the wisdom and wellness, but also not be doing it in a way that's burning myself out. Right. Find a way, like anything we learn that's new, finding a way to streamline. Yes. Right? Streamline yes. as much as possible. And it's exactly. not as hard as it once was. Exactly. Yeah. Well, excellent. So I think it's fantastic how you're tying all of these different passions together in the helping space yes thank you so much uh, and you've you found a common thread and, and a way to to package that and i was checking out your sites very very well done oh thank you very, yeah nice nice and, and warm so we'll get to that toward the end but uh what would you like to share with our audience today in terms of your experience your journey because you certainly have been through a journey it sounds yes. like yes yeah. um my journey is I think what I'd like to share with my journey, one of the things that I, um, a story that I share that, that I share in the interest of giving people hope and, and letting people know that there's something on the out, on the other side of 
often the biggest challenges of your life. Um, and so my, my journey with MS has been a big challenge, but actually prior to that, um, I was unhoused for, mm, it wasn't that long in, in the grand scheme of life. I think it was about a season. It's about yeah. three months. Um, and in that experience, really letting go of everything that I had uh, so many of my possessions and really having to just kind of be broken down to having nothing. And, and, you know, I grew up, we didn't have a lot of money, but we always had a roof over our head. Mm. And so that wasn't something that I had ever really experienced. And yet it was the most liberating experience of my life. And even at the time, there was a sense of, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, I felt, I still felt okay. I still felt grounded and almost more grounded than I did when I was kind of spinning before this experience happened. And so when I first moved to LA, um, we couldn't find a place there was in, and there was just, it was just like, we were stuck and there was nowhere to go. But even in that experience, being able to recognize that like the training that I had had in mindfulness practices and different opportunities and the work that I was doing, I was actually really being able to experience that in real time for myself and what that felt like to not, um, to go through something challenging, but to not suffer through that, to, through that experience. Um, and so for me, that story, that experience, and, and then, you know, was able to find somewhere, started working. And then as soon as I, this is actually what prompted me to start my private practice. Um, because when I moved to LA, had a job offer, job offer was rescinded. This was after I had already, you know, gone through the whole process. Oh, wow left my job here, signed on. And then it was like, Oh no, funding's gone. Job is gone. And so that was kind of what, what landed, landed myself and my partner at the time in this experience. And it, it it was, it was really funny how timing works out because through that whole time, I'm looking for work. I'm looking for work. I'm sending out applications. I have all of this experience. I have high level eating disorders experience at this time, just all of these really, I think, very marketable skills as a therapist right. just for like a job. I wasn't looking to do, you know, I was just looking to work on, you know, a unit somewhere or work in a hospital, just anything. I, I think with a supply find. and demand issue, that'd be an easy ask, right? Exactly. Right. It, it blew my mind. I couldn't find anything. And so this three months is going on, can't find work. So finally we find somewhere to live before I find the job. And then I see an advertisement for joining a, no, it wasn't joining a group practice. That wasn't the advertisement. It was to rent office space Hmm. and start a private practice and just see your own clients. And that wasn't the advertisement. It was just rent some office space from the therapist. That's that was the aha moment. Yeah, it had exactly. I had that aha moment. And I was like, well, I've always wanted to do private practice. My mom reminds me of this all the time. She's like, you told me when you were little that you wanted to work for yourself, own your own business, like do your own thing. And so that was something that I always kind of had in the back of my mind. Um, And that moment it clicked of like, yeah, why don't I just start seeing clients? Why don't I just do this private practice thing? And so that was what I did. So I went and I met with that therapist. It was actually a really great fit at the time. And so I didn't start my practice. Then I actually joined a group practice. That gave me an opportunity to learn from a therapist who was already seeing clients in LA to start to connect with clinicians in the area and really just be able to kind of get that connection and do that work. And so that's what led me to my private practice and where I am today. And the funny thing that, again, I feel like this was a very spiritual moment because didn't hear anything about these jobs I applied to. I felt like I was just applying to into an abyss. And then mm-hmm. as soon as I decided to start and join this group practice and she was sending me clients, I started getting, I started hearing back from jobs. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> right after. And I was like, ah, oh, okay. And I just, you know, was able to say thank you, but no, thank no, you. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm doing my own thing. And it was, and that was where I was able to take off from there. And so I think that that it reminds me of that that meme that picture that you see where the guy's like mining and he's like going through the like rock and he's underground and it's like you want to just stop right but you're right there it's like there's right right on that other side Mm -hmm. you can just 
keep moving. And so that is what really, um, that, that experience really brought to life for me. Cause I read stories, I'd heard other people's stories of having that experience, but for me really experiencing that myself and that opportunity to trust in the things that I already knew and the things that were already inside of me for so long and just kind of trust that those things were going to be able to, to bring me to a place that, that, that I needed to be. Wow. What a story. That's excellent. You know, I hear that a lot and I love to read, uh, auto biographies or listen, I'm more of an audiobook guy, mm, um, yes. but yeah. time after time it's yeah, you're right. It's that, that, the age old story of that inflection point being right beyond the point of quitting. <laughs> yeah. 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 So just hang in there, persevere just a little bit longer, you know, Yes. yes. You'll, you'll see the light crack through, you know? Yep. Yeah. So, excellent. Well, that's exciting. I was going to yeah. ask because it, oftentimes and in, in interviewing other therapists like yourself, like myself, um, going from agency work to private practice is usually a very scary jump, right? Mm -hmm. Because of all the, again, the unknown factor, mm -hmm. the sense of security with, mm -hmm. you know, working for somebody else and not necessarily being trained in business, obviously in graduate school and therapy school, you're not At trained all. to be a business owner, right? It's not an MBA. Right. Um, so there's a lot of things to learn that can be very scary. But for you, it wasn't quite that experience. You weren't jumping ship. <laughs> right. I had already jumped ship and I didn't realize right. it. Like I had <laughs> jumped ship without planning on it. I was like, oh, I'll go to LA and do something pretty similar to what I had been doing in San Diego, working for a university um, mental health program. And then the ship wasn't there. It was like I jumped <laughs> ship and there was nothing there. And so I had to go through this process. Really, It was like I had already I had already taken the big leap. And so the, the starting the practice didn't really seem that scary, mm -hmm. you know, and doing those, the, the, everything else was, was just, it, 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 it wasn't easy at all. Like I won't say it was easy, but it felt intuitive. It felt natural. It felt like kind of the next step. I didn't feel like I was letting go of this security blanket. Cause I already, again, I already had. And so I was kind of already off the cliff and like, just trying to kind of gather things to like keep right. myself keep myself you're already moved you're already kind of left the, everything behind you so exactly exactly and that's something that I think I you know I I read a lot of different spiritual texts and you know studying yoga and um studying astrology like all of these different these different um areas and mindfulness and stuff over the years and you just hear so much about how important it is to be willing to kind of take that leap and to step out of your comfort zone. This is a lot of what I talk to my clients about in sessions of like being able to, to leave that place of what we think is security to recognize that like, we're actually still secure. There is still something holding us up, even mm -hmm. when we don't see it, even when we don't know what it is, there's something there, you know, that can provide that security. And so, yeah, it's, it's been an interesting yeah. process for me, but it was, it wasn't, it didn't feel that scary. And I remember thinking at the time, everybody told me, don't do this. Like, mm -hmm. I remember, I don't know if you experienced this, but I, I was discouraged from starting a private practice. Like it, it wasn't discouraged from starting private practice, but from taking the leap mm -hmm. and doing it. I was kind of told you have to, you know, get a couple of clients here and there, see people do a part-time on the weekends to supplement your agency work. And then you can grow that into something and then eventually leave mm -hmm. that security. And, and I understand why people, that's why that was people's journeys and that's people's experience, but that was definitely not my experience. And I was able to really experience a, a lot of success pretty quickly taking that leap and not doing it in the, the, the fearful way, not, in let, not letting the fear guide me. Right. A lot to be said for that, right? Yes. A lot yeah. To be said for that. Now, when you started your practice, did you already have in mind that, hey, I'm going to have the autonomy now to incorporate these other things into my practice, such as the the yoga or the healing, which I know you still have in California have to have two separate, <laughs> two separate buckets. But in terms yeah. of being in your own operation, mm -hmm. it ha seems like you'd have a lot more autonomy with that model than you would trying to do like agency work and then trying to do these other things on the side. 
Definitely. Definitely. I think the autonomy was the biggest draw for me. Mm -hmm. Um, because even again, I, I went from, you know, agency to group practice for not that long, maybe Mm -hmm. about a year. Mm -hmm. Um, and with the group practice, that's when I was able to still kind of see, okay, this is, I'm doing my own thing, but I'm still not completely doing my own thing. I'm doing my own thing with, with guidance and under somebody else's business. And so that's kind of where the limitations of like the creativity Mm -hmm. would come in. And so I recognized, um, and decided to fully, I started my private practice and then decided to fully let go of the group practice when I was diagnosed, because I was like, all right, let me just go ahead and and do my own thing. I need to be in control of my hours. I need to be in control of my calendar. That was really important to me um, with this new diagnosis. And so that was kind of what brought me into that space of kind of seeing, oh, okay, I'm kind of doing it. But if I took the training wheels off and really had the full autonomy to create my own practice and then hire therapists myself, if that's what I wanted to do, which I do, I have an employee and I trained a therapist and she's licensed now and still works for me. Um, but it, it really, that kind of drew me to that was the idea of like, I can just bring everything in and I don't have to limit myself. And it was still scary to think about incorporating certain things, you know, incorporating energy work. And I, I wasn't trained in yoga at that time. And so that wasn't something that I was thinking about, but just like, how do I incorporate the energy work and like the divination and these other parts of myself into it? And it was really scary. And I remember starting a whole separate Instagram account that was just based on like Mm. being able to like follow, you know, um, accounts that were more more open to these things and talking about astrology. And then I realized that I can put all of those things together and it's okay to just show up as all of it, but it was still, it was funny because even like the process, I I look back to my old advertisements and like my old website and it's very different from what it is now. I would say it was pretty generic. It was just like, I'm a therapist and I help everybody and Mm -hmm. got some special eating disorders training, but otherwise it was just kind of, it wasn't really me. I wasn't Mm -hmm. really showing up as myself. And I've found that the more I'm able to show up as myself and be really clear about who I am, I find the right clients and the right clients find me. And so it's a really good fit. Excellent. You're, you're, what's that saying? Your vibe attracts your tribe. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And being able to experience that. Cause I think it's scary, you know, as a business owner, you really think you need to cast this really wide net and try to be a good therapist for everybody or do you know seem like the right therapist for more people but that really doesn't actually resonate as much as really being able to be clear about who you are and who you are best positioned to help you know and so for myself as a black woman I'm really best positioned to help black women we're like two percent of therapists um and so there's a need out there and so being able to say like hey I'm here advertising in certain spaces and being able to be open to that, I think is also really helped because the right clients are able to find me. Absolutely. And it's very, very important to understand what you have, your your unique position Yes, to help people, right? Who can relate and you can serve and and speak from experience, whatever that niche happens to be, right? Not being afraid to exercise that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's wonderful work you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. And I just have like a million questions going on in my head, just even yeah. around connecting all the things. Cause you, you talk about these things as though they're just, okay, just gonna add this thing to my mm-hmm. business. Right. Uh-huh. Even like, like you said, the podcasting that we, it's easy to say, but as far as the implementation, it's a whole other thing or the online offerings you have, right. Mm-hmm. Digital products, if you were, that's a whole thing. Right. I know there's a lot of buzz going around about course creation and all the platforms mm-hmm. now, like Think Epic and Kajabi and yes. Udemy and Skillshare and dot 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 learn dash and all these, these emerging platforms for this mm-hmm. space. But still, even with all those tools, the actual creation and implementation of something is not an easy undertaking. Right. And yeah. figuring out how you're going to not just carve out the time to do to create those things but then how you fit it into your business how you market it how you dot dot all of the back end stuff right yeah yeah definitely I'm still really in that process I actually really enjoyed um the episode of your podcast that was that just came out last week with Dr. Monica 
Oh, uh, Dr. Blyde, yes. Yes, yes. Fun. I actually trained with Dr. Blyde in brain spotting. I recognize Oh, how fun. Brain spotting. Small world, right? Yeah, and she's incredible. <laughs> and just her, I learned so much. I was like, man, where's my notebook? I should have been taking notes during this as far as like um, the different platforms to use and like her process of building the app. Because that's definitely, that's like the unknown um, scary part that I've ventured into at this point in my career. And I really, I'm, I'm glad that I'm pushing myself because I could just, I could just really continue to do what I've been doing mm -hmm. and be pretty successful and do pretty well. But I've been feeling this call to, to, again, to, to be able to provide tools to more people to, to offer more reach. Um, and so, it's, it's, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty uncomfortable for me. I have to say, yeah. I, I feel like I'm like, I want to be a content creator, but I'm not, I, I don't quite resonate with that. I feel very, um, old school in certain ways. Like as far as just like how I enjoy my time, like I don't love social media. I don't mm -hmm. love to be on social media. I, I, don't love texts. Like I actually still call people. <laughs> That's like weird. And people are like, what are you going to call me? Like, what, do we have an appointment for this? But actually I still like phone calls and I write everything down on paper before mm. I bring it into, into my computer and into a digital space, because that's where I feel more connected to my thoughts and to, to just, just myself. It just feels more natural to me. And so being able to you know, recognize that I have this calling to increase my reach and to go into these digital spaces and also the that dialectic challenge of of being somebody that that doesn't love doing this stuff and it doesn't come naturally to mm -hmm. me. And so it's like, how do I balance that? And what what does that look like? So that's kind of the the space that I've been in lately of learning from other therapists who are doing this and and you know, spending time doing some online learning, um, finding spaces where I can outsource, you know, mm -hmm. I think that's really important being able to like give myself permission to outsource and not do everything on my own. Cause oh, yes. I built Huge, right, to grow, on my own, right? the podcast, all of right. this has just been me pretty much. And it's, it's, it's okay to, to, to get help, you know, and to, to, to seek outside support and to seek other people's expertise you know, so that's mm -hmm. kind of where I'm at. Really, that's the only way to grow. And I think that just you're in such a position, right? Because you are the CEO of your business that you can carve out CEO time, which yeah. is time to actually think and mm -hmm. and work on the business, not in the business, right? Mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. crucial. Good in order to remember. To yeah. yeah, it's good to remember. I don't think about that. Yeah. About actually carving out that time. And I'm an avid listener to um, the art of online business. If you haven't checked it out, maybe it out. you might want yeah. to. But Rick Mulready, he talks all about this stuff. This is what he does. Mm -hmm. And he's a wealth of information. He's actually in their backyard in San Diego. Okay. Alongside with Pat Flynn, who you probably know about from podcasting. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Nice. I'll so, definitely check that out. Yeah. He has yeah. an accelerator program. I'm not in it, but maybe someday. But it's a really fantastic uh, thing he's doing around this and helping business owners um give themselves permission to kind of to grow right yeah. to think outside the box and to do what you love and not do it the things that you disdain like if you don't like social media then maybe you don't need to or outsource it <laughs> right exactly and giving myself permission to not to to be like okay i until i can figure out how to do this in a way that it doesn't feel like a strain it doesn't it doesn't take the joy out of the process it's okay to not do it you know like my social media, I still share my my social handles, but I would say my last Instagram post was like a really long time ago. And yeah. Because okay. I haven't had anything that I've wanted to share. So right? no need to share my my exactly. plates of food. <laughs> yeah, you don't you know? have, to, have to do these things. You, right. you get to when you feel so inspired, when it makes right. sense. Exactly. Right. You get to. And I think in this That's time right. that we're in now, like it's so different, the things that we're expected to do and the things we're expected to do that take up time and take our attention, just even like responding to texts, responding to emails, mm -hmm. um, having an online presence of some sort. All of those things are they, they take time away. And it's important to kind of pay attention to like, are these things that are really important to me? And how can I do this in a way that isn't 
where I'm exhausting myself or burning myself out. And so right. that is really important to me having like a life work balance, like work should not come first. I think mm. life comes first at the end of the day, if something happened, if like, you know, I had a client scheduled and there was an emergency with my family work, family comes first, like life comes first. And we expect Absolutely. that and we understand that. And so I think part of how we, build our life is kind of paying attention to that and being aware of that. What does that look like for me? You know, what did, what are the things that are important for my life to be able to come first? Yeah. And that's uh, one of the reasons I was excited to have you on because mm -hmm. I think anyone in this space, I think everybody struggles with competing goals, time management. And that's why it's a billion dollar industry, right? Time management, <laughs> productivity, you know, it's a challenge because there is this concept of we, we hear it all the time work-life balance, work-life mm -hmm. balance, work-life mm -hmm. balance. But that doesn't mean 50-50. No, no, doesn't mean 50-50. It's like, what do you want that to mean? Right. You and know, so, a lot of times we get prescribed our, what that's supposed to look like, but I think we all have to decide for ourselves. Right. What does that right. look like? Yeah. And, you know, seasons change in terms of needs and wants and, yes. right. Yeah. Well, and what's being seasons. neglected, what's a priority. Right. <laughs> right. And even just in terms of seasons, I, I, I talk a lot to my clients about the seasons of the year and, and, and allowing ourselves to be in that flow in the same way that anything organic would be. It's like trees don't grow new leaves all year round. They drop their leaves. They might be, the, the roots are getting deeper during certain seasons, mm. but we recognize they're not always producing. Right. They're not always bearing fruit. And yet we expect ourselves to constantly be producing and bearing fruit. And I don't think that that's really um, mindful of, of how we are organic beings. And so like yeah. we're, we're going into that season where things are slowing down in this hemisphere and, you know, there's less light in the day. We're feeling more tired. We're wanting more naps and allowing that and being able to create a life for myself where I can flow with those changes. And when I have more energy, I can be out there and do more things. And when I don't, I can be in my house and that's okay. And be with family and, and connecting. And all of that is important and of value. It's not just the productivity time that's of value. Yes, absolutely. And uh, I love what you say about using nature as an example, right? Mm -hmm. That we are organic beings. I love that. I'm going to keep that, you know, in mind. Right? Yeah, because we forget. That we're not robots. <laughs> yeah, we forget. And we have this very robotic way that we move through the world. And I mean, I think, you know, thousands and thousands of years ago, it wasn't that way because we didn't have things set up the way we do now. You know, it was like when there was, with, when, when it was cold and there was no, nothing to do outside, you didn't really go outside. You had to rest more because that was just what was, what life was like. But now we've built all of these things and we have, you know, there are kids that go to school all year round. I'm just like, really? Mm, right. <laughs> that just kind of blows my mind. You know, like there were already trading of this, like no break, like you, you don't get a break. And it's just like, yeah, I think it's, it, it's, it's contributed to how disconnected we are from from ourselves from nature from all of these things from the planet and so that's kind of a lot of the work that I do is like reconnecting us back to you know ourselves and back to the earth and what really matters yeah and on that I'm wondering what 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 helps you maintain that value attend to that value how do you protect time so that it, mm -hmm. it, it, you don't end up giving it away mm-hmm that's a really good question. I think boundaries is re are really important. And so that's something that as a business owner, I've struggled with and I've gotten a lot better um, in the last couple of years of being really protective of my time. I think when COVID happened and everything went online and we started working from home, the boundaries got kind of blurry right. with time. And I would find myself up at weird hours of the week, like working on, you know, podcast episodes or, you know, redoing a website page. And I just kind of had to, to, to get really clear with myself of, is this how I want to be using my time? Do I want work to be everywhere or do I want to have work in a container that is manageable for me? You know? And I think that was really where, where I had to just kind of, to, 
to start getting really intentional about it. And so like there's certain things I, I don't see clients before a certain time in the day. And then I don't see clients after a certain time in the day. I don't accept appointments. If somebody can't see me in these hours, then I have to refer them out. And that was a hard thing to do to be able to kind of sacrifice certain things in the interest of my of my time and my boundaries. But it's actually gotten a lot easier to do. You know, the more clear I've gotten with it, the more I just kind of like have to ask myself, why did I set up these boundaries in the first place? Mm -hmm. And then reminding myself of like my my intention, kind of going back to like setting an intention creating the boundaries and then checking back in with that intention. When I start to find right. myself getting like a little blurry with it, it's like, right. cause, cause there might be a time where that boundary doesn't make sense. If I'm working on a project, if I have a deadline for, you know, I'm, I'm working on a book right now. And so there's certain things around that where like, I may have to change the boundaries at that time, but that just depends on the environment and the situation. And that's in alignment with my intention. Right. It's not a recurring change. Exactly. Right. It's <laughs> not, not, a calendar, recurring, it's a little recurring not ongoing. Right. It's, right. it's situational based on this. And it's actually still in alignment with my values because this is going to help give me more time in the long run. I really like what, what you said. I think we can all wrap our heads around the idea of boundaries. Mm -hmm. But when you said remembering the why behind the intention of the boundary, mm -hmm. I think that's even at least for me. That's usually what I lose, right? Is because I'll set a boundary because I know it's important because obviously I've put in the time and effort to think about why this, this is right. important. But, it, so, you know, as things get busier, as the demands increase when you have competing goals, sometimes it's easy to fudge, at least for me. Oh, mm -hmm. I can just, you know, yeah. move, you know, add a little yes. more work here, a little more work there. And before you know, before you know it, you're feeling burnt out, right? And it's because oftentimes I forgot the why, you know why yeah. you protect that time in the first place exactly yeah. i think that why is so important and i think that why is important in like the work that we do and what we show up to and just what we what we're spending our time doing on a regular basis i think that in being connected to that why is the thing that can kind of stave off burnout you know it's like i can work there are times where i might have to work 60 hours a week. Again, if I'm working on a project, there's something big that I'm doing, but if I feel really connected to that, why, and I feel really in alignment with that, it doesn't feel like I'm burning myself out, mm -hmm. you know? And so I think that that's really important and checking in with that. And that's something that I do every day. Um, not like the why of every single thing that I'm doing, but I set intentions every day. I set intentions multiple times throughout the day. And so like right before we got on this call, I set an intention just for how I wanted it to go and how I want to feel in this process. And mm. I try to do that with like every, everything that I'm doing that's a, of any significance. Um, because I think that setting an intention, it's not just like, this is my goal, but this is like, this is already what I've decided is going to happen. Mm -hmm. This is like, okay, I set a goal for something. There's like possibility that I may not reach that goal. I'm going to try, but it, it doesn't mean it's a guarantee. But when I'm setting an intention, I'm like, no, this is, this is happening. Like I've mm -hmm. already decided this is how it's going to go. It's going to go great. And this is how I'm going to feel after. And it's like it. that belief, yeah. the belief piece is, I think that's like that magic that we can't really quantify. We can't figure out why it makes such a difference. You know, they look at, um, cancer treatment and cancer survivors mm -hmm. and that's that hidden that hidden variable right like how how people are feeling how much faith they have how much belief they have that they're going to beat this makes the difference and they see that and it's like yeah i think our belief is incredibly important in the positive and the negative we see as therapists how much our beliefs can affect how how we feel about ourselves and you know and and core beliefs and and how that can really affect us and i think intentions are one of the ways to intentionally <laughs> like yeah. connect to your beliefs and 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 to really intentionally decide that this is this is what this is what i believe and this is important yeah it's all relative it's all related exactly. absolutely mindset belief yes. system Ex yes right our motivations our values right you said congruence yep right and seeing those thing in alignment yes yeah. and checking in physically with ourselves emotionally throughout the day 
right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's that other piece that a uh, our body oftentimes can tell us if we're if things aren't congruent, if there's something that's kind of out of alignment. Sometimes we will be you know, moving a certain way and maybe feel some anxiety or feel something physical happening and not know that that's actually letting us know that there might be something going on that we need to attend to. And so I think that's the other piece that as a therapist, I wanted to bring into my work using yoga and, you know, different somatic training and things like that, because I think that like we forget how important our body is and how much it lets us know how we're feeling or what's going on. Absolutely. And I think you're the second yoga instructor I've had on this show and uh, makes me think I should really probably start taking up yoga. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you're you're getting called to it. Never That's too old, right? Happens. Yeah. It's like you hear about things. No, you're never, 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 never too old for yoga or too young. I mean, really, like it's something that that everybody can do. And we think yoga is just the postures and we think it's like all the pretty poses that we see on Instagram. And that's just one limb of eight limbs of yoga, you know, mm -hmm. and so yoga is so many different things. And, and it's, it's, it's very come as you are, you know, I think that's the other piece that that's part of the training that I'm doing is um, teaching people from like a trauma informed and really inclusive perspective, recognizing like people, a lot of times will say, I can't do yoga. I'm not flexible. And it's like, Oh no, you don't need to do, you don't need to be flexible to do yoga. Like yoga meets you exactly where you are. Right. And some ancient wisdom there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Wow. So, yeah, I really appreciate just you being so open with your experience. And it's just fascinating to me to see how these different passions and interests tend to come to fruition together. Mm -hmm. Right. And the work you're doing is fantastic. Thank you so much. Yeah. So lots of lots of wisdom. Um where can our listeners learn more about the work you're doing? Yes. So they can find me on my website, marylynjulia.com. Mm -hmm. um, and at that website, there are links to my therapy practice and mindful way counseling. So if you want to get in touch with me um, about my therapy practice, I see clients all in the state of California. Uh -huh. So there's a link for that there. And then liberated well, which is my new baby, which is my, um, yes. This yes, this is it, my, right? Yes. So this is liberated well, and this is where my online courses will be hosted. I'm going to be hosting my first online course for therapists called DBT um, skills for the culture. So I'm actually going to be teaching DBT because I've been doing that for a long time. And so, yeah, you can find me there and my social medias are all linked. Oh, in. I see at the bottom here. Yep. Very good. Excellent. This has your podcast as well. Right here. It does. Yes. Yay. All yep. right. That is messy mindful nice i like yep. have all your links here to the different uh, feeds that's great yes yeah easy peasy so yeah, important to have a uh, low, low friction right yes exactly that's <laughs> that's the goal <laughs> yes <laughs> excellent so then this is your therapy site right yes so that's my therapy practice that's myself and brad licia who is the therapist who works for me um and so we actually are both uh, listed there and then our services. And then I also have my blog up there as well. Very good. Yeah. I see that the blog and yeah, again, yeah. you're doing, sounds like you're checking all the boxes here. I love yeah. It. Yeah. I'm trying to, and it's like all things that just felt natural to kind of get into, you know, I've always loved writing. And so blogging just felt like something that I, I want to be able to connect to people and share my thoughts on certain things. It's fantastic. Wow. Yeah. Look at you. You are an inspiration. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, excellent. So I'll be sure to tie everything up in the show notes there. Awesome. So you're easy to find. Yes. And because uh, the work you're doing, you know, I hope that uh, anyone listening or watching to this episode definitely takes a minute to go take a take a gander because lots of good information there. Yes, so, thank you. Yeah, very good. Well, I would love to have you back on down the I would road. Love to come back. Uh, willing. Check yes, out I would see love how things are back. going with the business yeah, and the definitely. practice. Yeah. yeah, I would I'd be happy to come back and we could talk about all kinds of things. There's there's so many different topics. So I would love to Yeah, I see. Sure. I mean, we could have a whole episode on any one of these these avenues that you've been down. So Yeah, yep. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, awesome. with that, I will be definitely tapping on your shoulder down the road. 
Sounds good. I'm ready. Thank you so much for having me. This was awesome. My pleasure, Marilyn. So you enjoy the rest of your week in this sunny Southern California weather, but not too hot. Thank goodness. Yeah, it's a nice week. It's been beautiful. <laughs> so ready for the season. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. Well, you All enjoy right. your week. Okay. Thank you too. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Hey, if you're getting value from this content, which I hope you are, be sure to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel and podcast, and be sure to share it with friends and family to help our mission and raising mental health awareness. Uh, If you have any feedback regarding this episode or future content you would like to hear more about, feel free to reach out using the contact form or DM me on social. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Mental Health Toolbox newsletter so you don't miss out on any new content as it's released. It'll also give you access to all of my freebies that I put up there for you as well, as my way to say thank you. Well, there you have it, another tool to help you thrive. Until next time, keep making good things happen. Bye-bye now.